Now we meet an actor who some years ago interrupted a busy film and stage career to boldly go into a new uncharted television series which 20 years later is still being watched by ardent fans the world over. That phenomenon was called Star Trek and the star is a man I last saw in Los Angeles a couple of months ago when I crept up behind him on the flight deck of the Starship Enterprise and hit him with the big red book. Ladies and gentlemen, William Shatner. <laughs> really be funny if you handed me a big red book now and said, we brought you here for This Is Your Life and this isn't really the Michael Asper show. Oh, yes. No, that we, I, if I did that, nobody would ever come on the show again. Have you forgiven me for that experience? It was an extraordinary experience. I mean, This Is Your Life means that's your life. Mm. And from then on, there's no more life. That was your life. <laughs> Talking of books, you just hit the public with one of your own. You are now a novelist. I've written a book called Tech War. And uh, it's out in the United States right now, doing very well. I hit some of the bestseller lists, got some wonderful reviews. Well, Tech War, that has a slightly familiar ring to it. Does it really? Mm. <laughs> I think, what is it? What is tech? Tell us what is tech. Well, tech in the book is technology. And um, the technology, it's, the story is that of um, a policeman, vaguely around my age, sometime in the future, about 100 years from now, dealing with uh, the drugs of the future. My concept of the drugs of the future is that technology, and especially things like television, and the software that goes into television and plays things that you want to see or feel, uh, is what the drugs of the future are. You buy some software and put it into the little, little tiny television set and feel what it is you want to feel. And somebody invents a way of erasing the tapes, much like you would put your uh, film through the uh, thing at the airport and your tape was all erased. A man invents a way of erasing all the drugs. Well, this is a wanted man. He's wanted by the tech lords who, have any, who are the uh, drug lords, and he's wanted by the police because they want to get him and get that invention. And he's wanted by Jake Cardigan, our hero. Jake Cardigan, now that's... I read that and I thought, well, he's no pushover, this man. He's... <laughs> he's a bit of a sweater. Yeah. <laughs> Being woolly, you might say. Yeah. You can't pull a thing over his eye. You're not in stitches at the moment. Take one drop, one night on it. Oh, yeah. oh God. It, it, We're both getting woolly. <laughs> It reads like a film script. Does it? Mm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, strange question. Well, I was sitting there. I, I had some time. Actually, a year. <laughs> had a little time on my hands, a year. Um, I was in the middle of making Star Trek III. And we were getting ready to write it, and suddenly there was a writer's strike. And nobody could move. We couldn't do anything. And then there was a teamster strike. And then uh, people's schedule, had, which had neatly dovetailed into the shooting schedule, suddenly... I and I was sitting in this office at Paramount saying, what do I do now? I don't want to leave and do some other work because the writer's strike might be over tomorrow. And uh, I, I don't want to sit around and, and waste time on it. So I decided to write. And I took T.J. Hooker and I put him in the future and started to write an adventure story. Dare I ask who will play Jake? I don't know. <laughs> We need somebody dashing, good-looking, masculine, vital. I don't know if I'm free, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I had heard you were very expensive. <laughs> Thank you. Science fiction's been very good to you, hasn't it? And uh, vice yes, versa. Well, I didn't. I, I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. You said vice versa. I didn't say. You've been good for each other. It, it's done you, done it, you well. It's an entrancing form, isn't it? To be, to imagine what the future will be like, and not to be uh, contradicted because nobody else knows either. You see. So anything you imagine is possible, and your opinion, well, maybe not yours, but anybody else's opinion is. <laughs> is uh, your opinion is is worth what mine is. So therefore, mine's as valid as yours. So whatever I have to say is 
is valid. Because nobody can contradict you. Oh, I've been... <laughs> let us remind ourselves... On the other hand... <laughs> It's good fun. Yeah. Uh, let us remind ourselves of, as Enterprise and her crew are heading here for another fine mess. Something heading in at multi warp speeds. The basic maneuvers, Mr. Seward. Extremely powerful bolt of energy, Captain. Full power to the field, Mr. Scott. Give it the all we got, sir. All hands, red alert. There's a bank, stand by. Put on torpedoes. Condition red. Condition red. an orgy, I expect. And it was. Out of 79 episodes, are you able to pinpoint that one? I have no idea what no. that is. Yeah. Don't even know who the person in the yellow shirt is. <laughs> what about the size of the budget of those shows? Very small. We were making them, uh, if I remember correctly, the average show then was made for seven, eight hundred thousand dollars an hour. And uh, ours was like five or six. It was somewhat less and we were so technologically needy that it was uh, far too little. Now you have, uh, have said, at least I've read it quoted uh, and attributed to you, that you say, for better, for worse, I am, in people's eyes, always Captain Kirk. Now, did... Michael, I never said that. I'm sure you didn't. <laughs> did you? I don't think I did. Well, whether, whether you did or not, who cares? <laughs> what, <laughs> did it break that mold as much as you wanted it to? Well... It, all right, I'll go along with that. Um, there is, there, I, re, I remember one moment that taught me uh, the power of television. Uh, and that is, when we were shooting Hooker on the streets of Los Angeles, prior to our going on the air, during uh, six months of pre-production, pre, uh, shooting the, the segments that would go on in September, we were shooting all that summer, whatever summer it was. And people would crowd around the trucks and say, hey, there's, there's Captain Kirk, and he's doing, you know, and I'd appear in my police uniform, and I'd say, Captain Kirk in a police uniform? Mm. Then we went on the air. One, I've forgotten what night, one Tuesday night, we went on the air. The following morning, the kids were crowding around, there's T.J. Hooker around the truck, and, I, and, and, and um, Kirk was totally forgotten, and their knowledge of me was now that moment that they had seen on television. It's ephemeral. In the, uh, in the ten years between the uh, ending of the series and the making of the films, I think it was about ten years, wasn't yes. it? Mm -hmm. And you had some fairly bleak time during that. Uh, what yeah. did you find yourself having to do? Digging ditches. Um, I, I went out on the road. I, I toured in plays. I, I did uh, commercials. I did television shows. I did a lot of television. Bleak only on a comparative basis. I mean, I did award-winning television shows and did a lot of good plays. I did a lot of good work. It wasn't bleak. It, no, it, it was, was very full. It was very full. I, I, uh, I just didn't have the prominence, I suppose. And the one thing that all that teaches you is life goes on, you survive, and things do get better. Actually, that's the word, isn't it? No matter how bleak it is, it can get bleaker. No, 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 you can go on. <laughs> One door closes, another shuts. Yes. yes. <laughs> Bill, just rest on your laurels for a moment. After the break, we have Liza Minnelli.